Okay, so today's session is uh, the first webinar we do on heat transfer and thermal stress simulation. Uh, I think a lot of uh, engineers are waiting this webinar and today we'll talk about a lot of interesting topics uh, that I've listed in the, this slide. So first of all, we'll talk about the heat transfer uh, analysis overview, so the basics about heat transfer. Uh, to remind you a bit about the, the theory. Uh, some linear and nonlinear heat transfer difference, the steady state and transient state. We'll see also the thermal stress analysis and we'll talk about all the subjects like the comparison between heat transfer and linear static and also uh, difference between structural and CFD heat transfer analysis, which is a very uh, important uh, difference. So let's begin. So first of all, uh, about some basics about heat transfer. So uh, first of all, heat transfer, of course, is the heat flow, which is caused due to temperature difference uh, in a mechanical part or in any object. So you can see in the image that there are three major types of heat transfer, conduction, convection, and radiation. So first of all, Conduction is the heat uh, energy transferred through uh, the chain vibration of molecule or neutron from high temperature uh, to, the high, to a low temperature region. Then you have convection, which is the heat energy transferred through the movement of a medium. So it can be liquid or gas. So uh, you can imagine the water or maybe the air or around. All that is uh, convection and radiation, which is the heat energy exchange through electromagnetic waves between two separate objects, even without uh, the existence of a medium in between. So it can be the void. Radiation can, is the only type of heat transfer that can happen uh, in the void. Now some uh, conceptual diagram of the thermal load and uh, body condition that you have in uh, heat transfer analysis. So uh, you can see here that uh, the first condition is the prescribed temperature. So it means that you define the nodal temperature on your model. So this is the first type of load. Uh, the second type is the convection that uh, I've just described. So this is a surface type of load. And it's more or less equivalent to a pressure if you are comparing it with the structural analysis. Then you have the flux, uh, which is the exchange of temperature uh, through uh, temperature difference. You have a uh, heat source, which is the generation of heat uh, internally uh, by the body part. You have also some radiation, which is, can be external like that, so from another object to this object. So in this case, it applies to the surface but it can also be an inner radiation in a cavity. So in this case, it's called cavity radiation. Uh, and there are some small difference. And if you have no, uh, and no load or no any kind of uh, temperature assigned to some surface of your model, in this case, this surface will be considered as insulated. Now, text the Take the conduction, which is the first type of uh, heat transfer. And so this is a type of um, heat transfer that uh, can happen in solid, liquid, gas. And conduction always occurs if there's a te temperature difference uh, between two parts of the body. So as you can see, it's a simple plate here, but you have difference of 100 degree and 20 degree. And in this case, you'll have a conduction of the temperature from the high level to the low uh, temperature. So the major law that he is applying for conduction is called the Fourier's law. And it's, um, as you can see, it's defined by Q, which is the heat flux, uh, which is the rate of transfer of thermal energy through unit volume per unit time. You have the conductivity coefficient, which is a material property and is defining how well the thermal energy is conducted, and you have the temperature gradient. So uh, 
small notice is that this temperature gradient is always negative because uh, the temperature, the heat energy always moves from the high temperature to the low temperature. So this is why you have a minus in the Fourier's law. Now, second type of uh, heat transfer, convection. So you have also several types of convection. And the first one is the forced convection. So in this type of heat transfer, uh, the, the heat is transferred through the movement of the, the fluid, which is uh, forced by maybe a fan or maybe the wind or maybe a coolant. So this is why it's called forced convection. So it's generally a nonlinear heat transfer analysis because uh, we want to consider a transient type of uh, flow. So I'll talk about that a bit later. Uh, and it practically uses a lot of CFD analysis more than structural analysis. So in the present example, this is the cooling of a PCB with uh, several components inside. So you have the fan on the left and you have the fluid which is cooling these parts inside. Now, the second type of convection is called the free or natural convection. And this is uh, a convection which happens purely due to the temperature difference inside your model. So the temperature is causing some density change around the model which cause the flux of maybe air or water or something. So as an example, I can give you this uh, light. So it's a LED light. So you have the socket in aluminum around. You have the inner uh, internal air. Uh, ambient air is at 25 degree around. And you have the light chip inside. So these are the, the values used. And this is the result uh, if you do the natural convection analysis. So this is a fluid analysis. Uh, you have the flow fluid velocity caused by the temperature change because the temperature is going up. And you have the chip uh, temperature variation. Now, in this case of convection, the law which is uh, uh, used is the Newton's law. So the Newton's law is uh, defined as the law who give you the free uh, convection uh, result. So it's uh, written like that, Q equal H T minus T A. So H is called the convection coefficient, also called film coefficient, which represents the magnitude of heat transfer from the surface of a solid to a fluid due to the convection. Uh, T and T A represent the object and external fluid temperatures, respectively. Now, um, the last ty type, the radiation, is uh, the heat transfer phenomenon in which the energy tra is transferred in the form of electromagnetic waves, as I said, between two separate objects. And the law is much more complex because it's a nonlinear type of uh, uh, thermal loading. And it's defined like sigma f uh, epsilon t uh, power 4 minus uh, alpha t a uh, power 4. So the um, f represents radiation view factor. The sigma, which is a constant, is the Stefan Boltzmann constant. And the epsilon is the emissivity and the alpha is absorptivity. So Radiation is quite complex, and so it requires nonlinear analysis, as I tell, because the temperature has a power 4, so it's a nonlinear variable. Okay, now uh, let's talk a bit about linear and nonlinear heat transfer. And during uh, this part, I will do also some uh, tutorial to show you how to do that in uh, Midas and FX. So the first uh, type of analysis, which is the most simple, let's say, is the linear heat transfer. Uh, so the heat transfer analysis dealing with thermal flow condition, and in which the condition of the material property are uniform and do not vary based on temperature. 
So you can you consider that the material characteristic do not change uh, with the temperature, and also uh, so the load used are material conduction, convection, and heat flux. So you cannot consider radiation in this case. So um, we'll do right away this uh, simple tutorial to show you how to do uh, heat transfer analysis on this lamp uh, model. So these are the boundary conditions that uh, I will use. Uh, first of all, the temperature will be defined as 60 degrees on the three uh, glass la lamp glasses. And on the other surface, uh, we'll apply some convection condition by considering that the external air is 20 degrees. Um, and this is the fine entanglement model. Okay, so I have uh, okay, I have the other PPT with the example. So I'll do that directly into the software. Let's go into my lesson effects. Is it okay until now? Uh, if it's too fast, please tell me. And uh, maybe uh, slow down or something. Or maybe if it's too slow, you can also tell me to go faster. But uh, I don't know, it happens. <laughs> okay, so um, first of all, let's uh, create a new project. I'll use the millimeter unit for this uh, analysis. It can, of course, be changed during the analysis, but uh, let's begin with the millimeter. And let's import first the model. So this is the lamp here. Okay, I have it. So the first thing um, we'll have to do is to work a bit on this CAD model because as you can see there are some uh, inscription on this part which will uh, cause some problem during the meshing. Well, it will not cause really some problem because you can mesh it, you can do like that, but it's better to uh, suppress that because uh, it's not really use useful in the simulation. Okay, so to do that I'll use the simplify tool and use the manual simplification small edges. Just select these edges and click on remove to remove them from my model. Okay, so now it's already better. There's still one thing to uh, change a bit to this model. I'll show you what. For example, if I hide these uh, parts, you see that there is no imprint of uh, the, the glass on this part. So this is something that we need when you're doing thermal analysis to assign the convection to the right part. So to do that, it's very simple. In NFX 2014, you have the auto connection feature. So I select all the parts, I click on OK, and it will automatically create the imprint. So I'll hide the part and you see now these parts are connected together. Okay, sure. Um, okay, if you have some question during the presentation, please ask, and uh, I will try to answer in direct, in live. If uh, I cannot, maybe my colleague uh, approve will uh, answer your question afterwards. Okay, so this is the first step, which is the preparation of the model. The second step is to create the material for this model. So uh, let's go in the material tab. Here I already have the alloy steel, which I will delete and add a new isotropic material. So let's choose uh, aluminium alloy and let's choose this one in the database. And you see that all the coefficients for thermal analysis are already defined. So the coefficients which are important for thermal are here, the conductivity, the specific heat, um, and if you are doing a heat stress analysis, we'll see later, you, this coefficient is also very uh, important. Okay, click on apply to add the material, and now I select um, all the non-metal and I will add a glass material. Okay, now that I've added these two material in here, so you can view them here in the walk tree. Let's add, let's assign some properties 
which will be assigned to these two materials. So the first one will be aluminium. So I need that for the meshing. Glass. Okay. Now that I've done that, um, let's come back briefly in the PPT to see what is the next step. Okay, so um, so the next step is to assign the boundary condition. So the first one is uh, the yes to assign the temperature to the glass. So you have go in the static and heat analysis temperature. Select these three uh, parts and enter 60 degree and click on OK. Okay, now I have to assign the convection which uh, will uh, model the interaction with the around environment. So click on convection. I will hide the three lamps. Okay. And to define the convection, uh, I think the convection coefficient is in watt by meter, so you have to be careful about the unit. It's, uh, let me check, I didn't learn the value uh, by heart, so, okay, 10, oh no, it's in millimeter, sorry, millimeter, okay, let's change again to millimeter, so it's 10 watt by millimeter square and face and now uh, the environmental var value of the environment is 20 degrees so I enter 20. I select all the faces uh, of the model. Oh sorry you there's one thing you have to be careful you have to select only the external faces not the internal faces which uh, on which there's no really any kind of convection because it will not give you correct uh, results. So for that I'll choose front selection only option and if I select with the mouse like that it will only select uh, the surface which are on the front. So I'll check that all appropriate surfaces are selected. Okay, so it's okay. Okay and I have to unselect this intersection because there's no convection here and click on OK. Now you see I assign the convection and I assign the temperature. So um, now next step is to just create the analysis case. So, oh, no, next step is to do the meshing, sorry. So, um, because it's still finite element analysis, so if you have no mesh, it will be difficult. Okay, joke apart. Let's uh, check the glass and let's choose appropriate dimension. Okay, I'll uh, choose a size 2.2, let's say. Do the preview, looks good. Apply. Okay. And let's mesh also these two parts by selecting the right property, which is the aluminium. Click on OK. OK, now the model is meshed. Uh, still one thing I have to do is to assign the contacts between the parts because it's still structural analysis and if the nodes are not connected like in this case, you have to assign some contacts to consider the uh, okay, so I just have to select all the parts, click on OK, and these contacts have been created. So now I can go in Analysis, General, and create my analysis case. So it will be a nonlinear steady heat transfer. So um, I'll explain you why. So it's called nonlinear, but actually it's linear 
because uh, if you don't have any radiation in the model, it will automatically switch to linear type of solution. So uh, you don't have to select, uh, there's no linear steady heat. So in the analysis control, select 20 degrees Celsius for the initial temperature. Click on OK. And just click on Solve to get the result. So it will be very fast because it's a linear analysis. So OK, it took nine seconds. OK, and now you see I get three types of results. The first one is the temperature, solid gradient. Well, I think someone, something gets wrong in the model. Maybe I, I assign the wrong uh, material or maybe the wrong uh, coefficient value. Well, it's anyway. Uh, you understand the process how to do. So uh, I'll open the final model so you, you can see the solution. Okay. Okay, this is uh, what I should have got. Um, I'm sorry about that. Yeah, I think I have uh, some question wrong in the in my uh, material model. So this is why I got that. Okay, so this is the final result, temperature, solid uh, thermal gradient. Okay, I, okay, I have someone telling me that, uh, okay, thank you, Eric. Someone who is following. <laughs> okay, so the co he's telling me that the convection coefficient is, okay, it should be 10 watts by meter. Oh uh, yeah, it's what I'm, I'm thinking. It's meta not. So here it should be 10. Okay, I can try again. Okay, now I got the correct distribution. Uh, thank you. <laughs> okay, so okay, so this is the simple, let's say, heat transfer linear type of analysis. Now let's go back to the PPT and uh, talk about the other types of analysis. So the second type is the nonlinear heat transfer. So um, why is it nonlinear? Because in certain condition, the thermal flow condition uh, are depending from uh, the temperature. So the material properties uh, may depend from the temperature, or maybe the load you are inputting are de depending on the temperature. So you can see here uh, there's uh, boundary condition transient temperature condition, uh, which is changing during the analysis and the heat flux as well. So again, I'll show you how to uh, perform this analysis a bit later. Uh, before, I'll talk about the steady state and transient heat transfer, because it's important to understand the next tutorial, to understand what is the difference between steady state and transient. So I precise that the previous analysis that I just did is the steady state heat transfer. So steady state is uh, the analysis in which an object and surrounding are at an identical temperature. So uh, it means after a certain time, the temperature is reaching uh, a certain value, which is called the steady state. So if you look in the graph, here you have transient states. So when the temperature is changing, and at this time the temperature be begins to be stable, and so it's called steady state. So uh, in this kind of steady state heat transfer analysis, the only thing I want to know is what is the final temperature in my model. So this is the most, uh, the analysis uh, which is the most performed in uh, engineering design because uh, this is the final temperature that we want to know. Now uh, you have also transient heat transfer analysis. So this is a nonlinear type of analysis. Why? 
because it considers the time variation. So in this case, the system response uh, to a load or boundary condition is changing based on the time. So in the analysis process, the time integration process is performed with uh, certain time intervals. So it's very important to define the right uh, time interval. So this type of analysis is used when you want to know what are the drastic temperature changes in the model. So for example, at the beginning of analysis, what will be the maximum temperature? Uh, and then, so if you need to know that, you have to perform transient type of analysis. And as I was telling you, you need to define a proper number of time steps because uh, for better accuracy and stability of the solution. So if the time step is too small, uh, the results may have no physical meaning due to too much vibration of the temperature. And if the number of steps is too large, then you may not have accurately reflect the temperature in the areas where the temperature changes fast. So you need to adjust the time interval uh, correctly. Okay, for those who uh, didn't uh, really understood what is the difference, I'll explain very uh, simply, let's say. So if you want to see this uh, on my blog, fe4all.com, you can see a bit uh, what I'm talking about. Uh, to explain you uh, very e easily, you can imagine the, the shower, uh, which is very hot at the beginning, or maybe very cold, yes, very cold at the beginning because the fluid is cold when it begins. And after a certain time, it just becomes too hot, and then you have to wait a bit, and then it becomes at the right temperature. So this is exactly uh, describing the transient and steady state type of behavior. Because at the beginning, we have zero degree in the water, so it's very hot, cold. You wait a bit, and it increases higher than 37 degrees, so you feel it's very hot. And then you have some vibration until it reaches a steady state, and then it's the perfect temperature, which is 37 degrees. So this is, if you want to just know what will be the final temperature if I turn the button like that, you have to wait a bit and you have to analyze the steady state. If you want to know what will be the maximum uh, heat during this, when I open the, the, I open the button, I want to know what will be the maximum heat. So if I will not get burnt at the beginning, you have to investigate the transient type of analysis. Yes. Okay. Um, then now let's uh, do again this uh, tutorial, which is um, this time it's transient heat transfer type of analysis. So you'll see the difference with the previous one. It's almost similar, but there's uh, some small changes. And so it's a PC board with uh, some parts on it. And the, these are boundary conditions that I will apply. So the temperature condition uh, of these chips will change from 20 to 50 degrees during the analysis. On this one, it will change to 20 to 60. Then you'll have a heat flux uh, which will increase during this. So you can think about the processor which is overheating maybe. Uh, heat generation here. Well, okay, this one is the processor. Um, Okay, and the convection, of course. Okay, so let's uh, let's switch to the software. So this is the okay, this is the PPT. So uh, all these tutorials are available on uh, my SNFX website. So if you want to try again later, you can also get on it. Okay. Let's go in the software, okay. Let's close uh, this model. And okay, let's open a new model. I'll put it in millimeter again. I will try not to get the wrong question this time. Okay, uh, geometry import. And let's import the board model. So again, the first thing I'll have to do on this model 
is to uh, check if the geometry is correct for the analysis because it happens that you have to do something. So as in this case you see there's no imprint of the part on the board. So what you have to do is to do it. So uh, you can simply use the auto connection like I did before to create the imprint. Now you see this part are imprinted. So uh, now that I've did that I have to create my material. So it's the same that I did in the previous step. Delete um, isotropic material and let's choose um, let's choose some copper for the the chips. Copper material apply and the board will be plastic material so I go in plastic and I choose the PCB material, click on OK. OK, I have these two material and I create the property which are going with. So 3D property, copper, apply and PCB. OK. Now, um, next thing is to create the functions because I, I told you the temperature will change with the time so you have to create some time functions so to do that just on the right of this material and property button you have a function tab and click on time dependent function to create your first time dependent function so uh, to create that you can directly paste the value from Excel so here I already made that into Excel so I just copy uh, this will be the first function ambient temperature so I click here I click on uh, control V to paste that and I will call it ambient temperature I click on OK now if you go in the load and boundary condition tree you, in the function tab you see my function has been added here into the, the tree so I click again on add and I will add a new function which will represent the change of the heat flux this time. So same control V heat flux let's create another time function which will be the heat generation Okay, and another one which will be the change of the temperature in the components so I'll call it temp 50 and the last one which will be temp 60 Okay, now that I've created that, I can begin to assign the different uh, boundary conditions. So, you see there's two tab, there's, uh, you have to be careful about that. There's a tab for heat load, which is uh, only for steady state type of temperature load. So, you, if you are doing transient type, you have to go in the dynamic transient heat analysis. And here, it's almost the same button, so it happens that you assign the load from the steady state into a transient case and in this case it's not working so you have to be careful about that transient heat load so click on temperature uh, select the part and select these four components and the temperature will be equal to 1 and I'll assign the uh, temperature function to so temp 60. So why is it equal to 1? Because actually this value is multiplied by the value of the function. So in the function I already defined the temperature that will be reached uh, during this time. So I define 1 as just a unit coefficient here. Okay, I'll click on apply. 
Now let's define the temperature condition on these six components. So one again, and this time it will be temperature 50. Okay. Um, next, next type of uh, load is the transient heat flux. So in this case, it will be assigned to a phase. So I select the face of these uh, four parts. The coefficient again will be 1. And the time function is heat flux. Click on OK. And finally, the heat source here. So click on parts. So it's a volumetric type of heat source, 1. And let's choose heat generation function. Click on OK. OK. Now the last uh, thing we have to assign is the convection. So assigning the convection can be a bit tricky because you have to assign it only to the external surface, so not in the uh, surface which is, uh, sorry, not on the surface which is uh, inside. So between the two parts. Okay. Please wait one second. Okay, sorry. Um, okay, so I was talking about the convection. So click on convection transient. And so what I have to do is to not select the face here is to hide the board. So I go in the walk tree here, I unselect the main board, I select faces, select all the faces here. Um, the ambient temperature will be 20 and here the film coefficient, okay, uh, I'll try not to do some some uh, wrong assignment this time, so let me check just what is the exact assignment for the convection. Okay, one, okay, okay, ambient temperature. Okay, so this is uh, 1, and the time function is ambient temperature time function, and this is the convection coefficient to, uh, let me check again if it's in meter or in millimeter, because uh, I wouldn't, in millimeter, okay, it's in millimeter. Okay, perfect. And you see, if I select all that, the surface under is uh, also selected. So I have to unselect that. To do that, I just view the parts like that in this type of orientation. And I click on this button, which is the unselect mode. So if I select that and I do a rectangle of selection, it will unselect these faces. So this is exactly what I want. I click on apply to assign the convection. Now I have to do the same for the board, so I'll just unselect all the parts except the board, select, okay, uh, change, pass again to the select mode, otherwise it will not select, and unselect the interface between the different parts. OK, and click on OK. Now, um, OK, now I assign, I think, all the boundary condition. So what I have to do is to mesh the model. So I go in the Mesh tab, click on 3D Mesh, uh, just select everything and unselect the PCB, and choose the copper. And we'll just use the hybrid mesher because you see these parts are very 
well uh, suited for a hybrid mesher. So let's choose. Okay. So the meshing, okay, the component is done, and do the same for the board by changing the material. If you have questions again, please uh, ask. Okay, so uh, still one last thing that I have to do is to assign a contact between the parts. So I go into the static, okay, heat transfer auto, and I just select all the mesh sets. And here for the searching distance, I can just use 0 0.01 because you see all the chip from the board are very close one from another, so it's going to be better to do that. Okay, and now I can create my uh, analysis case. So I go into Analysis, General. I will select this time nonlinear, uh, not steady state, but nonlinear transient heat transfer. And very important, the subcase control option. It's a nonlinear type of analysis, so you should be very careful with the increments and the number of uh, number of time step for example so let me check again because I didn't learn that by heart um, okay so oh yeah there's one last step that I didn't do so about that is to uh, assign a sensor because uh, when you're performing nonlinear type of transient analysis, uh, what you want to know is sometimes it can take some time, you know, to solve a solution. So you would like to have a sensor which tells you when the temperature reached the steady state. So when it's stable enough, and I can stop the, uh, the transient analysis. So the sensor is actually doing that. So uh, I can let's say put a sensor on a surface or a point or a node on anything. It will be a sensor for temperature and it will uh, first test the maximum temperature and click on OK. And now I'll come back on my in my analysis case and uh, I will just go again in the subcase control option. So here the time duration uh, 1200 seconds. Uh, number of time step will be uh, 200. You have an auto time step option. If you don't know exactly the number of time step, you can use the auto time step, will be, uh, which will change your number of time step in function of the model. Okay, here let's select the sensor I choose, and so let's uh, use this sensor if the value of the temperature is superior to 100. Uh, let's check that it's uh, yeah, 100 and when the temperature changes less than 0 0.001 okay and in gen general tab you have to tell also what is the initial temperature so 20 degree click on OK and I am ready to solve the analysis so as it is a nonlinear uh, type of analysis, you see that the nonlinear graph is uh, this time uh, performing. So you'll have to wait uh, a few seconds because uh, as a nonlinear type of analysis, it takes some time. So you, here you have the maximum temperature, you have the percentage of uh, analysis which is achieved, and you have some overview of the temperature. If you want to see uh, the result during the analysis, you can also. So to do that, you have to uh, click on right here, open the result file, and you will be op able to open the file uh, even if it's still computing. So it's very uh, useful if I don't want to wait until the end. So I, I can show you uh, open result file. 
but I have to find the right one. I think it's this one. Okay, and you see the results are imported, so I can check uh, what are the temperature results even if my solver is still running. So let's still wait a bit. So you see you have the percentage here. So if my temperature becomes stable enough, so if I reach the steady state, this will stop. You see, my analysis stopped uh, automatically because my sensor tell me that it's uh, good enough. So it stopped at 65%. Uh, so I don't need to compute the other part. So it, I, I gain a lot of time by uh, doing that. And now let's check uh, the results. First of all, the temperature results. So you have a little slider here that you can drag and drop to see uh, the change of temperature. So I can activate the maximum. So you see uh, maximum of temperature, OK, 60, 70, 80. And you see that this part is the maximum. So when it becomes 100, this is the hottest part. Um, for the sake of the visualization, if you prefer, you can also use the new uh, auto range feature, which is give you uh, more, uh, let's say, uh, more um, averaged uh, values uh, in the view. And let's check the results. You can extract that to uh, draw the curves. So um, I choose nodal temperature, temperature. I select the points in my model on which I want to extract the values. So this and this and this and this. I choose the table. Okay. And I just have to select the column like that. Right click. Show the graphs. And you see I have the variation of the temperature at all these points. So it's particularly useful if you want to investigate change of temperature in certain parts. OK, come back uh, to the PPT. OK, where is it? Here. Sorry. OK, PPT is here. OK. OK, so next step uh, I'll talk about is the thermal stress analysis. So what is the thermal stress? Well, uh, thermal stress is a kind of coupling between heat uh, and structure uh, analysis. So you have generally uh, thermal, so it generally includes thermal deformation, uh, which is an area of structural analysis. So um, if the temperature is increased to a higher temperature, then the material expands. Uh, if the temperature decreases, then the material can contract. So uh, so in addition to the model of elasticity and the Poisson's ratio, you will need the thermal expansion coefficient, alpha. Oh, here it's uh, called epsilon, but uh, sometimes it's called alpha. Oh, no, OK, this, this one, this coefficient. OK, sorry. Yeah, OK, it's here. OK, uh, this is a thermal expansion coefficient, which is added in uh, the formula to calculate the new uh, change. So this is a coupling between structural and thermal. So when you have no stress and no deformation, uh, you see that you have a thermal deformation which appears due to the heat. And if you have, if uh, the bar is fixed on the two ends, then you have some thermal stress because it's pushing here like that. So the thermal stress analysis uh, can be done in several ways. So uh, the first one is that the user directly specifies the temperature on the structural model. And in this case, you need that the element of your model have a degree of freedom for temperature. And in this case, the, it is directly calculated uh, in the model so because it's assigned as a heat load. The second type is to use the heat structure coupled analysis. So First, it will obtain the temperature distribution in the model. Then it will use this temperature distribution as a heat load uh, for the structural analysis. And the, second the third type is the coupled analysis considering the thermal stress. 
or uh, the thermal deformation due to the thermal difference. So if you have a difference of temperature, it will create some expansion due to the uh, thermal expansion coefficient that I just talked about. So it's done like that. First you do the heat transfer analysis, then the results are automatically imported into the structural analysis and the analysis is performed. So uh, let's, uh, let's do a simple tutorial which is about this chip analysis and show you how to analyze the deformation of this chip due to uh, the coupling. So the condition will be like that. So when you are doing thermal stress analysis, don't forget that you need the temperature con condition, the boundary condition, but you need as well a structural kind of boundary condition. So in this case, you will need to fix uh, the, uh, the pins of the, this chip. So here we'll assign a heat generation conduction and some convection coefficient around. Okay, so let's go into NFX. Let's close these uh, model. Okay, and let's open a new analysis in millimeter. Let's import the model. Okay, the chip. So as I did previously, I'll check that this model is correctly made for uh, analysis. So for example, I hide the pins and you see there is no imprint of the pin on this part. So again, I'll have to uh, use the auto connection feature to create this imprint. So it's very easy and it's done automatically. You see the imprint of this part is now down. So I can prepare my model. So uh, second step, the same, create the material. So I delete this material and assign a new isotropic material. So here uh, I create two types. The first is the copper for the pin, copper, ply. And the second type will be, um, mm -hmm, will be a ceramic. Okay, uh, so it's in other non-metal, okay, ceramic porcelain. The connectivity is very small. Okay. Okay, uh, close that and create some properties assigned. So, uh, copper. Ceramic, so ceramic, okay, I have a question, uh, what is a solid modeler uh, in my lesson effects to import? Uh, I didn't really get your question, uh, Michel, can you uh, please reformulate your question? Uh, yes, I have another question also from uh, Yusuf. Uh, can we use composite material? Uh, yes, you can use composite in a structural analysis. So you can use composite material as well. Um, okay, I create my properties. Now, next step will be to, uh, let me check briefly. Okay, uh, the next step will be to assign a boundary condition. Okay, the next step will be to fix the pins. So, uh, I go in static, constraint, face, and let's fix these pins. Fix. Okay, uh, and now that I did that, let's assign the, um, okay, let's assign the generation uh, of heat source. So go into uh, source, parts, 
select the part in the middle and this will be 0 0.01 okay and now let's assign the last the convection so let's check the, what is the co coefficient for the convection okay 28 okay so to assign a convection convection again i have to be careful because i shouldn't assign a convection between the two interface um, so i'll hide the parts in the middle, the ceramic parts. I select all these uh, okay, faces and I have to unselect these two. So the value of ambient temperature is 20 and the film coefficient is 2 power minus 5. Uh, is it minus? Uh, let me check. Yes. Okay. Now uh, now I have to, to switch. Show only. And to assign the same, the convection to these parts. In this case, I have to unselect the middle surface. So let's assign the same coefficient. Apply. And finally, and on the middle part, and select the surface which are in contact with uh, all the solids like that and click on OK. Okay now um, it's done. Now I can mesh it. So I go into the mesh, 3D mesh. Let's mesh the eight pins before and choose copper. Let's mesh it into hybrid, automatic. Let's view the size, okay, apply. Okay, and now let's mesh in ceramic material the center of the chip. So again, hybrid. Okay, now I have to Assign a contact automatic. Check old mesh. Okay. And okay. So now my model is ready to perform the thermal uh, linear thermal stress analysis. So I go into general and here linear thermal stress steady state. So, okay, I give the name. Um, in the subcase control, so it's a linear analysis, so I, the only thing I define is the initial temperature. Click on OK and solve. Okay, so if you look at the text file, you see that it solved the first the thermal analysis and then, so it took one second to solve the thermal, and then it solved the structural three seconds. So, uh, and now it gives me the result. So, uh, you have the heat generation, uh, the solid gradient, and the heat flux in the parts. And in the second analysis here, the translation. So this is the uh, deformation due to heat. So of course this is uh, deformation is scaled uh, so it's uh, if you have the real scale you can't see anything because it's very small deformation uh, but you have it here and you have the stress as well which is generated in the pin um, I have some question uh, from Monica uh, Monia sorry 
uh, how do you describe the contact surface uh, with a specific law if you perform a nonlinear analysis? Uh, you don't need to define a specific law for the contact. It's actually automatically defined when you define the contact between the parts. But you have access to some uh, parameters. For example, you can define some kind of resistance between the, the contact. So, for example, uh, you have to define a contact parameter. So you can have a thermal conductance, for example, between the parts. So uh, this is the only parameter that you have to change to have uh, some uh, difference. Otherwise, everything is calculated automatically uh, in function of. Uh, so the contact with the if you're talking about the contact with the ambient temperature, so this is defined by uh, the convection, of course. Uh, if you're talking about all the type of um, co the conduction. This is defined by the conduction coefficient, which is defined inside the material properties. So this law is automatically defined in the model. And you don't have to input it manually. OK. Do you have uh, any more uh, question about this model, maybe? Yes, for the surface, uh, surface so external type of contact. So in this case, it's defined by by the law. But this is calculated automatically when you define the, the loads, so you don't have to define it manually. OK, uh, let's go back to the slide. I have another question. Is it possible to use uh, the functions to calculate the coefficient of heat convection? Yes, uh, of course. If you have a heat a convection coefficient, which is changing uh, with the time, you can create a time function like I did in the previous tutorial and assign it uh, to the coefficient. And then you have a coefficient which is changing with the time. So this function can be uh, as you want. So it can be a nonlinear function, uh, anything. OK. Um, so let's go to the, for the next topic, which is the comparison of the heat transfer analysis and the linear static analysis. Uh, maybe some of you are wondering um, why is it so similar that uh, you have structural analysis and also steady state heat transfer, so linear type of uh, heat transfer. It's because there is a lot of similarities between the um, the two types of analysis. Uh, if for structural analysis, the basic law which is used is the Hooke's law, but for the steady state heat transfer is the Fourier's law. So they are really equivalent uh, for linear type. I'm always talking about linear. Uh, the model of elasticity is equivalent to the thermal conductivity coefficient k. Uh, the displacement u is equivalent to the temperature. The stress uh, the strain value is equivalent to the temperature gradient, the constraint condition uh, or force displacement is equivalent to the specified temperature, and the actual force is equivalent to inter internal heat generation per unit length. So it's really, uh, really similar. So this is why you can couple the two also as well. Uh, the lows are really matching. And the final uh, things I talk about is what is the difference between structural and CFD analysis to study the heat transfer because this is something that is very important to understand and uh, some person are uh, wondering actually. So there's two uh, types of analysis that uh, can perform heat analysis. So one is the one I talked about is the one on the right, the structural heat transfer analysis. Uh, and the one on the left that I didn't talk about today, uh, just a bit, but not really uh, in details. Maybe we'll do another webinar later on on this type of analysis, which is fluid dynamic type of analysis. So this is considering solid and fluid volume. So in this case, you have to define a fluid which is around your solid or maybe inside your solid. And you will really be able to view the flow of temperature and the flow of water or maybe air around or inside your solid. So in this case, you will have to only to model the fluid and the solid. But um, uh, OK, 
in, in the structural heat transfer, you have only the solid. So the fluid around is actually a kind of approximation. So you will define the convection coefficients, which will more or less uh, give you a kind of uh, low defining the behavior of the fluid around your solid, but it's some uh, low which is really, uh, it's considering that the fluid is uniform around, so it's very simplified type of uh, analysis. So in certain case, you don't really care about that, so this is why you can perform this kind of analysis, but if you are caring about what is the, the behavior of the fluid, what is the impact of my uh, heating on the environment around, then you will have to perform CFD, structural analysis. So when can I perform structural heat transfer analysis? Well, when the fluid temperature can be assimilated as uniform around the solid part, and when we investigate the behavior of the structural component only under heating, so convection, heat generation, radiation, and also when we investigate the stress and deformation caused to the part due to heat load. So these are the cases where you'll have to perform these kind of analysis. For CFD heat transfer, this is when you are uh, you want to study the behavior of the fluid around the object, or maybe you want to investigate the impact of the object on the environment, or maybe the impact of the fluid on the cooling of the object. So to investigate natural force cooling, this is uh, you need to use CFD type of analysis. So, uh, of course, Midas and FX can also perform uh, CFD and also CFD fluid solid coupled with uh, heat transfer analysis as well. Okay, so uh, this is almost all for this uh, webinar. So, if you want to learn more about Midas and FX, uh, find more training material, you can go on MidasNFX.com for website. So, uh, in the learn and support section, you will find some tutorials. So, uh, for example, you'll find the three tutorials that I demonstrated today. Uh, so you can download them, you can download the, the CAD model, and you can test by yourself how to perform such analysis. But, of course, you will need to have... Um, okay, uh, for the webinars, you can go try e-learning free to uh, view the webinars. So uh, in two weeks, we'll have a webinar on topology optimization, which is also a very interesting topic. Uh, so you can go on the website and register for this uh, webinar as well. And if you didn't get uh, the trial of Midas and FX, you can also go, go on Midas and FX website and require the 30 days trial, which is fully functional, and you can test by yourself all the tutorials and try to do it by yourself. Okay, now it's the uh, last uh, slide about, uh, so first of all, thank you very much for attending this session. We have uh, quite a lot of people today. Um, I'm sorry about the change of time, and maybe some people missed the webinar because of that. Uh, so now I'll answer about your questions. Uh, okay, so I see I have quite a lot of questions. Okay, uh, is it uh, capable to model the metal foam materials and the porous media? Um, so by porous media, okay, so you, you're speaking about CFD, heat uh, transfer analysis. Uh, yes, uh, Midas and FX, actually in the actual version, this uh, 2040R1, uh, the porous media are not yet available, but uh, we'll get it really in uh, the next version, the R2 which is almost uh, released, so you'll have to wait one or two months to get it, and we'll have uh, post media as well uh, in CFD analysis. What is the main advantage of Midas and FX over the similar software? Um, well, there's a lot of advantage. Uh, the first of, of uh, that I would say is that you have a totally integrated environment, so as you saw during all this tutorial, you can perform thermal analysis, structural analysis, uh, and even CFD or even other more complex analysis in one environment. So you can make one model and perform all the type of analysis on the same model. So you don't need to change your software to perform such kind of analysis, or uh, it's very uh, convenient. Uh, the second thing is that it's really easy to use compared to other softwares. 
So uh, the workflow is quite simple and straightforward. So only by following a few tutorials you can uh, get ready to uh, perform your own design uh, analysis. So usually maybe all the software it's taking months to learn the software but uh, NFX only maybe in one week or two weeks you can be ready re really to perform your project on the, the software. So if you're, you're not convinced about that you can download the trial and see by yourself that uh, it's really easy to use. And uh, the other last advantage is that um, you have a lot of tools which are really uh, enabling you to um, to correct your CAD model, for example, to uh, make the simulation, because a lot of uh, simulation software are not so uh, able to uh, to uh, let's say to simplify your model because it's very important uh, that you can simplify and make it s suitable for uh, simulation. So in NFX you have a lot of simplification tool uh, as well Boolean operation. You can also create a model inside uh, of course like uh, like the, that. You have uh, an other thing is that you have two modes. You have the designer mode and the analyst mode. So what I show today is the analyst mode uh, which is the most complex of uh, the two modes. But if you are a designer which needs a simple tool, you can switch to the designer mode in which you will have very simple, uh, even much more simple than the analysis mode to perform your analysis very simply. Okay, do you have all the questions about all this? Uh, I hope that the webinar was okay. Uh, there's a small survey with a few questions at the end, uh, so if you leave the webinar, uh, please just fill these few questions. It will help us to uh, make better webinar in the future, so it's uh, important. And, okay, I hope that you learned a lot about uh, heat transfer analysis. Okay, then if I have no uh, more questions, uh, thank you very much and I hope to see you for the next uh, optimization webinar, which will be also very interesting. Goodbye.